here this evening on the dais as well as uh, a room full of uh, leaders and young leaders that are being developed in our community. Uh, we have so many things to be grateful for and thankful for um, as our community goes through changes and as we grow. Um, we ask for uh, prayers for those in California still dealing with wildfires and those that have lost so much. Uh, please protect the firefighters and first responders there and um, elsewhere, uh, keeping us safe uh, both here and abroad. We ask these things in your name. Amen. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Often we're doing that, the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's um, us and three or four people. So having a full auditorium uh, is, is pretty cool to have uh, uh, some, some depth and some base to that. So thank you guys all very, very much. Uh, next on the agenda is a proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. Uh, whereas communities across America have been plagued by the numerous problems associated with illicit, illicit drug use and those that traffic in them. And whereas there is hope in winning the war on drugs and that hope lies in education and drug demand reduction, coupled with the hard work and determination of organizations such as the Lewis and Clark Young Marines of the Marine Corps League to foster a healthy, drug-free lifestyle. And whereas governments and community leaders know that citizen support is one of the most effective tools in the effort to reduce the use of illicit drugs in our communities. And whereas the red ribbon has been chosen as a symbol commemorating the work of en Enrique Kiki Camarena, a Drug Enforcement Administration special agent who was murdered in the line of duty and represents the belief that one person can make a difference. And whereas the Red Ribbon Campaign was established by Congress in 1988 to encourage a drug-free drug lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention and reduction efforts. And whereas October 23rd through the 31st, 2017 has been designated National Red Ribbon Week, which encourages Americans to wear a red ribbon to show their support for a drug-free environment. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Canby, do hereby proclaim October 23rd to the 31st, 2017, as Red Ribbon Week in the city of Canby, and urge all citizens to join me in this special observance, given under my hand this 18th day of October 2017 in the city of Canby, Oregon. And we've got someone here to... So first, I'll explain who Enrique Kiki was. Enrique, uh, Enrique Kiki never asked to be a hero. He did, however, have a dream and believe that he could make a difference and make our country a better place to live and work. On Thursday, February 7, 1985, about 2 p.m., Kiki locked his badge and service revolver in his desk drawer and left to meet his wife for lunch. According to the DA, DEA's ah, uh, of events, Kiki crossed the street to his pickup truck, turned off the truck burglar alarm, and unlocked his door. Before he could get into the cab and pick up the two-way radio to alert his partners, he was grabbed by five men, he was all shoved into a waiting van and sped away. This was the last time anyone but his kidnappers would see him alive. One month later, Kiki Carmarena's body that hit of his informant were discovered in a shallow grave 70 miles of from Miko 
Mexico, they had been Kern beaten and brutally murdered. Enrique was 37 years old and left behind a wife, three young sons, and a dream. When he was murdered by drug dealers in Mexico, they ended his life but not his dream. As long as we continue to remember him, wear the red ribbon and fight illegal drug use. His dream is still alive. And Red Ribbon Week is the last week of October as Red Ribbon Week and celebrated Kiki's life and vision. Please join us, the Young Marines, and encourage everyone you know to join in the celebration of Kiki Carmen Carmarena's life and wear the red, a red ribbon. Anti-drug education is a vital and key element in the Young Marines' fight against illegal drug use in our communities. Red Ribbon Week provides you an excellent opportunity to help educate our youth. If you can't help us in this fight, then who will? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, we have two scout groups here uh, with us this evening. Um, so scout troop 400, did you guys decide on a spokesperson? Come on up, sir, to the microphone there and uh, introduce yourself, what's got you here this evening and uh, your troop members. Um, my name is Jake Doman and we are troop 400 Boy Scouts of America, and we are here to get our citizenship to the community merit badge. Excellent. Thank you. Do you want to introduce your uh, your troop members? Um, Alex, Tyler, Eric, Cole, Ben, Britton, Seth, Logan, and Jarrett. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you. And we also have another group of scouts. So who's the designated spokesperson from that group? My name is Parker Glenn. Um, we're from Troop 266, uh, Board Scouts America. And we're really glad to be here. Um, tonight we have Brigham, uh, Marco, uh, Owen, Jarek, and Merrick. And we're really glad to be here. We're getting our citizenship in the community merit badge and our communications merit badge tonight. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Appreciate it. Congratulations. <laughs> One of our, our uh, many highlights that we get is uh, city councilors is having uh, you guys come in and work on those merit badges. So we appreciate you guys very much for coming in and doing that. So thank you. Uh, we'll move into uh, communications. Yes, I uh, have the privilege and the honor of announcing tonight that uh, the city of Canby and our st state his or our, uh, local historic preservation uh, committee has uh, been awarded the Golden Paintbrush Award <laughs> in the city of Canby. And it's in recognition of consistent participation and effort with the State Historic Preservation Office and other certified local governments to preserve Oregon's cultural and built heritage, uh, most particularly the work that they've been doing uh, at our cemetery over the last years has, uh, I, th I think, found favor with the State Historic Preservation Office. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a big deal. A, it is a big deal. Uh, that's a lot of work by uh, Carol Palmer and uh, Jamie Stickle to make that uh, happen in our community, and uh, and that's a cute, it's a big recognition. And I think we've we've set the bar uh, here in Canby for a lot of the other cities in that in that capacity that they uh, they had to add a new award this year um, because so many other cities have, like are reaching the gold paintbrush. So now it's the silver, the sparkly trowel, I think is the next <laughs> award. Yeah, so. Well, I, know, I know our committee and particularly Carol Palmer who is uh, certainly our historic uh, preservation leader in this community will be eyeing the, the next level of awards next year. Uh, I think it's notable to uh, also share with you that we actually skipped a brush uh, I think we went, uh, typically you go from silver to gold and we skipped right past silver and went to gold for the fine efforts of our, uh, of our historic preservation group here in town. And I would expect nothing less. <laughs> I agree. 
Oh, great. Thanks, Rick. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, first opportunity this evening for citizen input and community announcements. So if you have anything to address the council on or make an announcement uh, that's not on the agenda, um, now would be one of your opportunities to do so. There's yellow cards on the back if you want to fill that out and hand that to our city recorder. So we'll make sure that I get it. The um, first up is the, is it the New History Minstrels? Quartet, gentlemen. You sure can. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, the Oregon New History Minstrels came about as an idea here in Canby at the place to be when it first opened, and then we were sad to say it closed, but it's opening again, all right? And the Oregon New History Minstrels idea was we're going to replicate what the Christie Minstrels did, teaching you folk music, yes, but teaching you about the folk. When we go into an area, we have young people research information. You have some literature coming around to you. You'll see one piece of information that shows a bunch of young people there from your city, Adam Doty and others, that research the history and then put together an actual script and then do a 10 to 15 minute program on the history of an area. And then we, in our music program, teach about the individual characters, William Knight and others, for instance. So we had, we thought, you know, we ought to take this idea and make can't be the feature. So the Clackamas County Tourism Division, like the Mounted Territory, agreed and funded a grant. Mallory Glenn helped us with that. He's going to be opening the place to be uh, during the month of November. And so you'll see on the second cardstock piece, basically four locations starting November 4th here at your beautiful library in the Lamont Room, and then continuing on November 11th at Veterans Day at the Legion Hall with a spaghetti dinner that night. Your mayor has agreed to help us say a few comments that night about veterans' importance. And then continuing on to November uh, 18th at the Canby Depot and concluding the four-week series of programs at <clears throat> basically the place to be. So what I want to do is introduce the people that have worked hard on this. It's funded through a program that I run called Rivers of Life Center. We're the ones that have brought four river cruises to your community and provided them over the years. And we hope to bring the Willamette Queen Sternwheeler down next fall in 2018 to be positioned in this area to do showboats are coming where reenactors will be on board, people you see on the front of this cover, music will be on board, and the theme of steamboats in the 1850s, visiting communities not just for commerce, but also for entertainment. That's what was done. Showboats are coming will be some one of the things that we do too. Matthew Ring is one of your citizen, young citizens here, just down the street. He's our administrator. This is, of course, is Ken Daniels. I think most people know Ken. He's our tenor. <laughs> our, our, our bass here, Basso Primavera, we call him, which means pretty good bass. Is Steve Hurst, and then I'm the lonely baritone. My name is Jerry Herman. So we just wanted you to be aware of this. It starts a um, week of Thanksgiving. We want to be thankful for this community and what you do, the agricultural economy, all the things you do by celebrating your community through reenactors, through history programs, all with music and narrative. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, I have uh, Raymond. And your last name, sir? Baldwin. Baldwin. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, uh, thank you for the opportunity to come here, and I, I'm very thankful to be an American citizen, have the opportunity to come and uh, face the council uh, and uh, redress a grievance, and I appreciate the opportunity. No problem, sir. Uh, so, Mr. Baldwin, if, if you could for me speak uh, into the mic so that the TV oh, can pick it up and the audience here as well. Um, okay, you can hear that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna pretty much read the statement. So um, if you have any questions at the end, you can and ask me. This may seem a little uh, new for you. So, uh, and uh, I, I didn't come to bring a spirit of contention. This is, I'm here to edify. I'm not here to, uh, um, you know, 
bring a bad spirit or to you know somehow um, point my finger at you. So I'll start. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> council persons and fellow citizens, I come before you, the city council meeting today with a matter of uh, grave concern in an effort to reduce, to redress a grievance. A grievance so serious as to invoke charges like tre trespass of treason, fraud, subversion, uh, misprison of felony under color of law. Not to mention civil rights violations. And I come not to anger or to point fingers, but to edify and confer. It has come to my attention, and I bring it to yours, that the city of Canby is operating an unlawful court of no record. That means under the authority of the mayor and members of the city council by and through their city administrator, chapter five, section two, who is the head of the corporate government of the city of Canby, are all in violation of the city's charter for violations of chapter five, section three. And I quote, all proceedings in a municipal court for the violation of a city ordinance shall be governed by the applicable general laws of the state governing justice of the peace and justice court, courts, unquote. The city provides neither one, for a justice court is a common law tier three court, a court of judicial review, and we all know that a court of no record has no review. As for your courtroom, uh, the city flies the peace flag, old glory, outside of the police station. But once in the courtroom, the city flies the admiralty flag with the gold fringe, placing the court in admiralty, administrative law, maritime law, martial law, jurisdictions, under the law of the sea. The city of Canby's judge, not a justice of the peace or a common law judge, but an admiralty judge can rule as Captain Bly but we are not on the ship Bounty, and we are not at sea. We are here on solid ground, and we are here, we are here on solid ground, where the Constitution prevails, as supported by the city's charter. In addition, as some of the police officers are my friends, I, I must object to the forced practice of violation of the Congressional Separation of Powers Act Police officers are officers of the court, yes, but they are not bar members. They are not properly trained in the law to operate as prosecutors, officers and witnesses in, uh, in any case that is contested. Cases where the city attorney under chapter five, section four of the new or chapter five, uh, ver section five B of the old and I quote, the city attorney shall represent and defend the city in all suits, actions at law, and matters and things in which the city can be, may be legally interested. So my question is, do all police officers of Canby have the training in the law and proper certificates to have standing in a court of justice? Or for that matter, does any of your police officers qualify for the position of deputy city attorney? The answer is no. A separation of powers has been violated. So my grievance is clear. It demands immediate action, even this day. I would draw your attention to the charter, uh, chapter six, section six of the new charter and or chapter six, section, chapter six, section seven of the old. Oath of office. Quote, before entering upon the duties of an office, each officer shall take an oath and shall affirm support of the Constitution and laws of the United States, the state of Oregon, and the city of Canby, and to faithfully perform the duties of the office, unquote. So, as you can clearly see, the mayor, the council, and the city officers involved have all violated their oaths of office to support the city charter and to uphold the United States Constitution. They failed to perform their duties in accordance to the law, the, the law, the Constitution, and as such, have violated the public trust. As such, I 
herein and now demand that the city elected, appointed, or by civil service exam employees rescind. Make firm your commitment and your position and stick to it. And that the city provide both a justice of the peace, a common law judge, and a tier three court of justice, a common law court jurisdiction. These are constitutional common law uh, jurisdiction, a court of justice. If the city thinks that they can stand on an ORA statute that allows unlawful courts, think again for, quote, any law that abrogates the Constitution of the United States is null and void as if never written. And as ORS uh, chapter 174030 states, when any two laws are in conflict, the prior law prevails, even all the way back to the Constitution. For we the people will not rule against, shall not rule against ourselves. I will allow the city a brief time, but before the next council meeting to rescind. If not, I will be forced to seek a remedy from a higher authority. Mr. As, Mr. as soon as some of you may not have been aware, you are now in the know. I hope you found my words edifying and you may consider this a, um, my compliance in uh, conference and compliance with LR uh, 1-7A, and I'll let Mr. Lindsay explain that to you. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and uh, I'll answer any questions that you might have. Thank you for uh, bringing this up. Uh, I can't say I'm totally familiar with everything that's being mentioned there, so we are gonna need some time, um, unless, uh, Joe, there are pieces there that, um, you want to address now or we table and um, can we have copies of those notes, Mr. Baldwin? Uh, well, I, I took all my notes off of the two city charters, the old one and the new one. Okay. So if you just listen to the uh, recording, then you'll have it all. And, uh, and I'm more than happy to edify in the future if you need my help. Mm -hmm. uh, all I'm saying is we want to bring the, our, our city charter into compliance with the Constitution of the United States and laws of the state of Oregon. And uh, by doing so, we will better serve our people and we'll better serve the community. The way it is right now, uh, this is a real serious situation for the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Appreciate it. Yes, Mr. Parker. I think we've talked about this before, that uh, when we do have citizens coming to us with important statements, um, especially things like this where we haven't had a chance to get a background, uh, I think you've talked about a process where, where we refer it to staff and ask them to come back yep. with a written report and a staff recommendation. I agree. Because uh, it's, it's a little difficult for me just speaking off the cuff on hearing this for the first time. So I think it'd be a more efficient use of the council if, if our city administrator or city attorney researched this and came back with a report. That would be my suggestion. I would concur. Um, so, Joe, if you will. Yeah, I'd be please. happy to um, write a, a quick memo to you guys about um, the very uh, legal way in which we proceed with our municipal court according to charter and state statute, as well as Oregon and U.S. constitutions. That would be great. Okay. We'll, uh, We'll work with Rick and Kim on getting that put together and out to all of us for that. So thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Appreciate that. Any, you bet. All right. Uh, any other, I don't have any other yellow cards from, uh, so we'll move into uh, the rest of the agenda. So mayor's business, a uh, couple of things. Um, on the C4, so Clackamas County Coordinating Committee, uh, our last meeting, uh, I think we had a bit off more than we can chew on our agenda. We were gonna talk about uh, transportation and the TriMet transportation bond, as well as housing. Um, That's a small and, agenda. Yeah, well, <laughs> considering it ran a half hour over just to cover the transportation piece, um, that tells you how that meeting went. So the uh, basically, the, there's a, TriMet is putting forth a transportation bond 
um, that if passed would approximately generate $1.7 billion uh, for transportation projects within the TriMet service area. Um, funds would be used for uh, highway projects, small projects within various communities within TriMet, uh, as well as the light rail expansion of uh, the Southwest Corridor. So that's Highway 99W from basically Portland down 99 and make its way through Tigard and uh, eventually out, I believe, to uh, Sherwood. Uh, Chair Bernard and I wrote a letter to uh, Metro President uh, Hughes, as well as the TriMet director, uh, explaining a couple of things. Number one, um, that their process is very rushed, um, and their hope is to get it on the ballot for 2018. Um, we think that they're being um, very hasty in their um, vetting process right now. So, for example, <coughs> we met on uh, third. Uh, we had to add it to the our agenda late because they wanted information that week. Um, the Washington County Coordinating Committee had to convene an emergency meeting um, to put look at their projects and try to get them vetted for TriMet so that they could go out and do their, their vetting process, which is via polling. Uh, the second piece that we, um, to the letter, was that we wanted to make sure that the Abernathy Bridge, um, so that's part of the 205 project, um, that that, if that's going to get, if that's going to be Clackamas's project, that it is a considered a regional project, and therefore all money for that project be pulled right off the top and not um, before you know not part of the project list because of its regional significance, and then um, also supporting um, C4's decision to put the Abernathy Bridge and then various projects, and I say that in quotes. Uh, because some of the projects on the the list, uh, many of us at C4 hadn't even seen or talked about. And so it was a real um, kind of a, uh, like I said, it was a rush process. So what they're going to do is put all these projects up against each other in a polling and put it out to citizens within the TriMet service area to kind of vote and get a vibe on what's going to be or what projects, if they included it in the bond, would help the bond pass basically is their um, what they're hoping to do um, we also recommended consideration be given to phase two of the sunrise corridor um, the c4 group as a body felt that by putting the various projects out there that that would support the bond passing versus one project like the sunrise corridor which is still 60 40, 50 million dollars um, just in getting that completed. So um, stay tuned for more on that. Canby is not impacted by that bond because we're not serviced by TriMet. So this is purely just the TriMet area um, and not it's not a metro bill. It's, yeah, it was really interesting to hear the argument for why TriMet is putting this bill out versus um, metro. So. Um, and then the costs would be spread out on all, all housing, all, all properties within TriMet service area over the next 30 years. So it was not a, a cheap um, endeavor being put um, on, on that. Uh, so more to come on that. Uh, Friday the 6th, we had a great art dedication on the wall here outside the library. Uh, we had uh, artwork posted by local artist Kathy Ray Smith. Um, she had huge support from a great number of local elementary student artists um, whose artwork have made the wall and huge help from Canby Sign and Graphics and Hot Rod DreamWorks. So they all work together to laminate and fire roast the metal to make sure that it's seasoned and, and will last a long time. Uh, I got like we just were told about the golden paintbrush. I got to welcome the State Heritage Preservation um, committee, I think is, is that their proper title, Rick? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was about 40 people from across the state here to talk about preservation and they got to tour Canby and um, we got the golden paintbrush. Uh, last night uh, we attempted to hold a joint meeting between the city council and the park advisory board. Um, 
unfortunately we had to cancel that due to a quorum issue. Um, the purpose was to again talk about the park fee that was recently passed um, and to get into conversation about managing exp expectations around the fee, project lists, um, and future of park development in Canby. So that more to come on that. A reminder to the city council that we are hosting the Clackamas County City's Dinner on October 26th at six o'clock. Um, I'd love to have 100% participation from the council. Um, right now we have 44 RSVPs, which is a pretty darn good turnout for a city's dinner. If you cannot make it, please let Kim know tonight because she needs to know for headcount um, for dinner. Uh, and that's all that I have. We're gonna move over to uh, Councilor Smith there for his report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will first start with the October 9th Um, then um, today the French Prepared Forum met uh, today, we got done at four o'clock, and there was a couple of interesting things. One, there was a presentation from the uh, University of Oregon. Sorry about that. There's a presentation uh, from the University of Oregon. Uh, it's called the RARE program, which we've had three individuals that are uh, graduates in uh, community planning, various um, functions of that, that have served in uh, Canby over the last three years. And I got to hear their full spiel on their program, which we've taken advantage of, which is probably wise, um, wise of you to do, Rick, and, and your staff. Um, then we had um, a lot of Marion County uh, law enforcement there and talking about um, their priorities and some of the things that are going on in the north side of Marion County. And Clackamas County Transportation was there talking about Clackamas County's transportation, uh, primarily in relation to us. The connection to Arnt Road was brought up and discussed with some of the other local jurisdictions, um, which were mostly up to speed on that. And there's one other topic I was going to mention. Didn't reduce it to notes yet because it was only at four o'clock. I think that's probably about it from that meeting. Um, oh, uh, Planning Director Brown was there um, and it was nice to see him show up. And let's see, that's probably it. Great. Thank you, sir. Mr. Parker. Well, more history all the time. I was pleased to hear about the award for our historic um, review commission. And uh, it shows the difference that a few people can make in a uh, community. Um, also, we celebrate Carol Palmer because she goes out and does things. And it, it reminds me of the one piece of philanthropy and volunteerism uh, information that I received when I was working with Habitat for Humanity. And that's the number one reason people don't volunteer is that they aren't asked. And uh, Carol asks, and uh, she asked me uh, to write a play uh, for uh, Women in History Month in March on the life of Elsie Cuthbert. So with the blessing of the Cuthbert's family, I'll be putting together a play and uh, soon to announce um, the star of this, of, of, of a local celebrity uh, who will be uh, playing the role of Elsie Cuthbert. So we've got that coming up and I'll have details for that later and hopefully I'll ha have the play written by March. Um, <laughs> October 19th, the River Connexus, rolling on the river, commercial traffic at Willamette Falls from early times to the current. And that's uh, uh, tomorrow, October 19th, Thursday, uh, at the Antonio Ballroom, better known as Upstairs from the Backstop. 
Uh, if you like history, great. If you like uh, beer, even better. So uh, come on up and learn a little bit more about uh, the history of the river. Uh, some sad news uh, for me about the Willamette Falls project. I checked with one of the uh, people involved on the inside of that. And we do have a problem with the owner of the property at the Willamette Falls who does not want to sign off on the application uh, for the river walk. So we are stalled and there are negotiations, but I'm trying to take the long view that <clears throat> good things take a while to get done and this is, this is just but a small blip. Um, also, finally, on the Main Street program, we have uh, our Halloween program coming up, and I've uh, cross We The information is on our Fit Canby Main Street Facebook, which I hope everybody subscribes to. But if you don't, I cross-posted it tonight to Canby Now so that people can see where and what's going on for the uh, Halloween evening. That's it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dale. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, on the Canby utility front, uh, the 2% power rate increase due to a very modest uh, increase by Bonneville Power Administration uh, went through its hearing last week and has passed. So we'll be seeing that tiny little bump in our power bill soon, uh, but much, much smaller than it has been historically. So 2%, not bad. Uh, just to bring everybody up to date, last Friday we had an incident uh, where a couple uh, we were, the city was informed that a couple people uh, became ill, perhaps from drinking from a water fountain in Waite Park. And as soon as we found out, they were turned off and Canby Utility tested the water in the fountain's water line and did detect coliform bacteria. Uh, no coliform bacteria was detected in the supply line behind the backflow device that protects that, that fountain, uh, nor was any bacteria detected anywhere else in the park or the city's water supply. Uh, crews found a twig was stuffed down the nozzle of the fountain and we speculate that's likely the source of the bacteria and that it just sat in the line of the fountain and on cool days nobody's using the fountain or flushing it. So it became contaminated. Uh, the fountain supply line was washed and flushed and retested. Uh, Wait Park's water fountains do remain churned off for the winter season. It was time now. Uh, in the city, we wish to thank Canby Utility for their quick action in helping to resolve the matter. And we join with them in emphasizing this is a real life example of why backflow devices are important and it's important to have them tested annually at your own home. And in a little while, Carol Sullivan from Canby Utility will be up here to talk to us about how to save ratepayers some money. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Mayor. Thank you, sir. That's right. Hello. Hello. So for the library, I have just a few programming announcements, which is pretty apropos for this age group of kids we have today. So there's a couple activities and events coming up at the library. There's a holiday um, craft making for adults and teens happening October 24th at 6 p.m. And there's a teen Halloween night on October 25th. The teen room is in the back corner there. You can see it through the windows off the sidewalk. That's for not exactly sure what there's, what's going on, but Halloween-y sort of stuff anyway. It should be fun. And then there's a language exchange that happens every Saturday at 11 a.m. It's called a language exchange or intercambio. So it's for those wanting to speak to learn English or Spanish, you just come and you can learn your second language with other speakers of that language. So those are some good opportunities for folks your age. With um, Canby Area Transit, I don't have anything there. School District, just an announcement that the middle school bazaar is coming up. They always have their annual bazaar. Many children come sell their art um, artworks as vendors. So it's pretty exciting. It's a big fundraiser for those that are going to be traveling this year abroad. So I encourage you to come to that and it is on November 4th. Also the unveiling of the art sculpture was so special that Friday. I was so glad to be a part of that and I'm so glad that we value art in this community. I was so proud to stand there and feel like wow we're a small but mighty town that really values art. I was proud of that and then the color, the splashes of color that those little kids added to it was just, it was touching and it's going to be there forever hopefully. <laughs> so it was just very, it was a proud night for Canby so thank you to everybody involved with that, the planning and execution of that. Um, the Taste of Autumn through the Canby Ed Foundation was a couple Saturdays ago. Great fundraiser, just a fun night, lots of people there to um, raise money basically for the Canby School District and a lot of activities that go on to support students. So that was fun. 
And then, um, Question for the mayor, our neighborhood associations, could we put that maybe on a work session? Could we maybe see if that's something, talking about what we want to yeah. do with those? Because we, you know, I feel like there's a lot of potential there sure. and it doesn't get spoken of, but if you guys agree, I think that would be yeah. a worthy topic. Sound good? Thank you, I'd appreciate that. And then lastly, Ray Huey, who is um, a journalist for the Canby Herald. He, I don't know how many years he worked here. He just retired about three years ago. But he passed away recently, I found out. And I just wanted to say, just wanted to acknowledge him. And he was quite a, a member of this community. Although he didn't live here, he reported diligently about the community. And I just wanted to say, give my condolences to his family. So thank you, Ray, for all you did. Do you know when that occurred? I think August. So a couple oh, months ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I've got. That's too bad. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of quick things. Um, I wanted to, I guess, third, how exciting the art unveiling was and how much more life it brings to this building. But also there's just so many exciting things happening downtown. Watching the Dahlia project go up has been particularly exciting the last couple of weeks as uh, I'd actually become something yeah. other than a piece of dirt. So that's <laughs> that's been really exciting. Um, I missed the Bridging Cultures meeting last night in lieu of our, um, of our meeting that ended up not happening, but um, just wanted to make a note while I catch up with them between now and the next meeting that um, their Thanksgiving will be the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And I know all of our can calendars are following, filling up for the holiday season. So if you wouldn't mind marking down that the Bridging Cultures Thanksgiving celebration will be this Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, I, I would love to see many of us come out if possible. I don't have the time, but I will bring it with me next time. Just just let a little mark on your calendar it would be great. Um, and then also attended the Taste of Autumn for Canby Ed Foundation. It was particularly exciting because the vintner this year was um, a former German teacher at the high school that I think Tracy and I both had. And, I don't know if anyone else had them, but um, it was kind of very full circle to have a former Canby educator provide the wine for the Canby Ed Foundation. So it talks a lot about, I thought it said a lot about our community, a rich agricultural community, a community that really values education and relationships. So um, yeah, that's all I have this time, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move into the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the minutes of the October 4th, 2017 City Council regular meeting and the appointment of Kelly Harms to the Historic Review Board for a term to end on June 30th, 2018. Great, thank you. Second. Motion is made by Council President Dale and seconded by Councilor Spoon uh, to adopt the minute, uh, to approve the consent agenda, which includes the adoption of the minutes of the October 4th 2017 City Council regular meeting and appointment of Kelly Harms to the Historic Review Board for a term to end on June 30th, 2018. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Carries 5-0. Uh, next on the agenda was supposed to be a public hearing uh, on the zone change that Councillor Smith was talking about, um, but that has been postponed to December 6th, so we will not be hearing that this evening. Uh, we'll now move into resolutions and ordinances. Kim. Hey, we have one resolution tonight. It's resolution 1275. This is authorizing the sale of water revenue refunding bonds and related matters. And Carol Sullivan is here from Canby Utility. Great. As Carol comes up, I just want to uh, take a moment to express my appreciation for the work that Carol does for Canby Utility and for the residents of this community. She just does an outstanding job and uh, I always enjoy uh, working with her on projects that we have in common and uh, really respect her expertise and, uh, and the professionalism she brings to her job. So thank you. I guess you don't need to make the presentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> Honorable Mayor Hodson and members of the council, the 2007 water revenue bonds are callable and Canby Utility would like to refund them. Refunding the bonds will result in a net present value savings of $148,468. This is achieved through a reduced interest rate that we got from JP Morgan Chase of 2.09%. The current bonds have a varied rate of 3.625 to 4.15%. All costs will be covered by the refunding of the bonds or the uh, Canby Utility Water Fund. Since the city owns the water assets, that's 
um, Camp Utility manages, this resolution is needed for us to act on behalf of the city to refund the bonds. Um, I don't, I didn't want to get into too much detail, kind of just in a nutshell, it's a very complicated refinancing. There's bond council and um, financial advisors that we use. And if you have any questions, I'd be more okay. Yes, Councilor. That answered my question because I had a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'll skip them because it does look very complicated. Yeah, it's quite yeah, I'll take a bite. <clears throat> Go for it. So the instrument that's being used to refinance this, is, it, is this a municipal tax-free bond or uh, what, is, what, are the, what are the bonds that you're going to? It's a bank placement, actually. Okay. So it, it, the bank actually is paying off the bonds mm -hmm. and we will be making payments to the bank. Okay. And we did this in 2004 as well. So this isn't, so we're not getting, so you aren't getting getting new bonds, you're getting a, a bank loan, is it? Yes, that's that's how I see it. Okay. Um, but there's like bond documents and master declarations that back it up and have okay. to be followed. All right, well I was just trying to track what the current rate for uh, municipal bonds is. You, your, the rate that the bank's giving you is 2.9, did you say? 2.09%. 2.09, okay, there we go. That, yes. That makes a little bit more sense. Excellent, thank you. Basically, yeah. it's free money. Yeah. yeah. That's about what it boils down to. Isn't I do have. Give uh, our uh, college students when they take out loans? Yes. Free money? <laughs> two point, two point loans? Yes. I do have. Uh, says, that's uh, a yeah. different says, conversation. says the senior dad. Yes. <laughs> so I do have some actually yes. pretty extensive experience in my career on uh, uh, refunding of bonds and and the uh, uh, what Carol shared with you is is absolutely correct. It, it's a very complex process, but uh, the measure at the measurement date is whether the refunding, when you add in the cost of the reissue, uh, if it yields a lower overall cost to the issuer, it's a good deal. If it yields a higher overall cost, then it's not a good deal. And it's a test that just goes, you know, kind of continues on and on until you hit that magic point where it makes sense to, to do the refunding. Uh, direct placement is a very common way to, uh, uh, to refund bonds because it gives you an absolute knowledge rather than selling in the open market. It gives you the absolute knowledge of, of what the uh, resultant interest rate will be in doing the transaction. And when the, the bonds were initially issued, what, what projects did Camby Utility in, end up doing? Uh, the 13th and Fur Reservoir. Okay. And some other capital projects, but that was the big. It was a big project. Mm -hmm. well, okay. And they're 20 year bonds. They will continue to be 20 year after the refinance. It'll be 10, the, the final 10 years. Final. So they'll go for 10 more years. 10 more, okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. It'll be the same term. Right, um, and then callable, what does that mean? Can you define that? Um, like it's uh, so okay to. It's, o it's okay now <laughs> to, to refund Ref them. Okay. They could have been refunded earlier, but it probably wouldn't have been cost effective, so now is when they're callable in the 10 year period. I don't know if you wanna add anything to that, Rick? No, that, uh, th th there's a period of time during which um, they, the buyers, the, the original buyers of the bond have to have some level of assurance that they'll be able to, to cover their investment and make a reasonable profit. So there's a period of time when the original bond is issued that they're not callable, they're not redeemable. Uh, once you hit a, a magic point in time and it's, it's outlined in the bond documents, then uh, that's when uh, the underwriters and financial advisors begin to look at the financial advantage associated with with refunding the bonds and uh, the refunding, as Carol has uh, very eloquently described, um, addresses the balance of the term of the original issue. It's not a new issue of new money. Uh, just it's a mechanism that uh, can allow you to save money. Uh, the um, um, whoever is purchasing the uh, the bonds um, during the refunding has a reasonable assurance that it, it's a good transaction for them and uh, uh, it just works well for everybody. It's a good deal. Any other questions for Carol at all? No? Okay. 
take a motion. Mr. Mayor, I would move that we approve resolution 1275 authorizing the sale of water revenue refunding bonds and related matters. Second. Motion made by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Parker to approve resolution 1275 authorizing the sale of water rev revenue refunding bonds and related matters. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <clears throat> That passes 5-0. Uh, no new business, uh, city administrators, business and staff reports. Nothing? Okay. Next opportunity for citizen input. Are there any other citizens that want to provide input this evening? Seeing none? Okay, action review. You have adopted resolution 1275. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, uh, exec session this evening, sir. <laughs> We do not. Thank you. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn this evening. I move we adjourn. You want to second that? I'll second that. Greg is two for two tonight. Wow, yeah. Motion's been made by Councillor Height, second by Councillor Parker to adjourn. Any, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed. All right. Canby, thank you, and good night. <laughs>